what is the hope of his calling, so that I may know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me, and so that I may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believes. And so as he goes back to the first slide, we're going to repeat that together. Here we go. I ask that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him today, and that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened, so that I may know what is the hope of his calling, so that I may know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me, and so that I may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believes. Next slide. Because the word amen means let it be so today. Amen. There was a moment when the lights went out when death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners for every curse is blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared? Oh, hail King Jesus! Oh.
speaking this. Healing is in the room. Hear me. Healing is in the room right now. Peace is in the room. Joy is in the room right now. Right now. The sovereignty of the Godhead is in the room. Don't miss it. Respond. Respond. We crown. I don't need any 
anything else, sing it out. Cause you are my one thing. Tell them you are my one thing. I don't want anyone else. I don't need anything else. Cause you are my one thing. You are my one thing. I don't want anyone else. I don't need anything else. Cause you are my one thing. You are my one thing. I don't want anyone else. I don't need anything else. Cause you
Yes, I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break.
Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the strength, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I'll speak the whole name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the strength, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. The holy name, Jesus. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is God. Yes, it is. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire Oh, shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus in the strength Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, oh, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire, cause your name is One more time. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Oh, Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the strength, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, cause your name is Come on, sing this out. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the strength. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the strength, Jesus in the 
above every name, the name that is above every name, that loves us so dearly. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? If you're sitting here this morning, God loves you. You may not feel loved, but God loves you and you're special. Call on his name. Call on his name. He loves you with a, with a love that is unending, undescribable. He loves you that much. We're going to worship the Lord still in our, in our giving this morning as the ushers are waiting on us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Do you know that? His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Who can put into words and tell the mighty deeds of the Lord? Or who can show forth all the praise that is due Him? You should know that He is good today. If you know Him, if you truly know Him, you can say He is good. When He takes a life that is wandering in darkness, in pain and hurt, and changes that around to a life of joy, that is good. That is good. Our occupations are only what we do. That's not who we are. As we're worshiping here this morning, the Lord remind me of that, Doug. What you do is only what, what painting is only what you do. That's not who you are. We belong to Him. And we want to, we want to obey Him and carry out what He wants us to do. He will make those provisions for us to do that. He is good, amen? Father, we thank you this morning for this great time to, to come together and worship you. We, we know you're here with us, God. We feel you, and we know that you're here. We pray that every need here today is met before we leave, God. We call on your name to touch every need in our lives, God. You come to give us life, and, and we, enjoy, we enjoy that abundant life that we experience in you. And together, we thank you, God, for each one that's here this morning. Uh, we thank you, God, for the word that is going to be delivered today. We know that that's a fresh word that's going to fall upon us and feed us today. That we can take that as we walk out of here and share that with someone else around us, God. It is not meant to, for us to just keep that. He says, freely you have received. Freely give that away. Don't hoard that up. But help us to give that as we give our tithes and offerings today. We give you thanks, O Lord, for truly you are good. Amen.
Good morning, Bethesda. Good morning. Good morning to all our family guests and uh, visitors online. Uh, we just want to take this moment and uh, share some things that you guys can get involved in this, this month um, and what God is doing here at Bethesda. And uh, we want everybody to be part of. And the first will be um, tonight we have corporate prayer. And it's at 5 o'clock tonight. Everybody's welcome to come. Uh, it's a time as it'll be worship tonight as well so it'll be a time for all of us to be together and worship and, and pray together and it'll be a wonderful time okay how many of us appreciate our pastors yes yes amen well, next saturday october 7th um we're going to be celebrating our pastors uh, we're going to have it's a pastor appreciation and we're going to be having a pie bake-off competition. <laughs> we're going to be, um, there's going to be uh, one for cherry pie and then one for pumpkin pie and the elders and the wives will be the judges. Um, please make sure to bring a large side dish. Uh, the meat will be provided by Bethesda. The meat and drinks, I'm sorry, will be provided by Bethesda. Also remember um, that we're not just feeding our own families. We're feeding everybody else because I know for us, we would probably bring something small, but we're not going to. Um, there's also going to be volleyball, a cornhole, um, an art table, face painting, and a bunch of family fun. Um, letters have been sent out. If you did not get one, please see Jackie Hughes. And if you don't know who she is, the beautiful lady in pink over there. Also, October 7th is uh, the Oasis Retreat for 50 and over. This is a free event, and it's just to contact Karen Smith and try to RSVP by today. Okay, um, October 8th, they're going to be having the giftings class at 4 p.m., and the sign-up is in the lobby. And then October 14th, we're going to have youth pumpkin patch trip. We're going to meet at the church and be prepared to leave by 5 p.m. Lots of announcements. Um, October 21st is the young adult chili cook-off. Oh, man. I wish I was in that group. <laughs> Can I be a judge? Um, it's going to be hosted by Anthony and Heather Brown, and if you don't know who they are, Miss Beautiful Heather's right here, and Mr. Anthony's back there in the booth. Um, it's going to be at their house. There's going to be a bonfire, chili, and fellowship. There will be um, a Best Chili Award for the Hottest Chili Oh, I'm sorry, Best Chili Award and Hottest Chili Award. A food fellowship and a bonfire. Bring the kids and hang out for a while. It's from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m., and contact a member of the uh, young adult team for more information. All right. And October 23rd, it'll be 5 p.m., um, Feeding America. Come out and fellowship and help our community to process. It's at 300 Peterson Drive, Elizabethtown. These are not just announcements. These are opportunities for us to be involved in what God is doing here at Bethesda. So you can take part in them. All right. So at this time, we're going to do what we normally do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a meet and greet. So everybody get up and... Uh, Say hello to somebody you haven't seen today. Thank you.
but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No. Yeah. 
one more time. And this is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Can opener. A can opener is uh, incorrect. Your turn. It is not a can opener. Bottle opener. It is not a bottle opener. Uh. A do not disturb sign. A do not disturb sign. It yeah, could like be on, for the you hotel. Can't, you for the hotel. Can hang. No, that is not true. I don't oh. know. I wasn't there. That's why I answered. Oh. <laughs> a door opener. A door opener is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> is it a seatbelt cutter? <laughs> a seatbelt cutter is a good guess, but it's incorrect. 
like a, a latch for an electric fence? That, I, think that's, I think that's what Jimmy James said. <laughs> no, he's um, wrong. Okay, well then give yourselves a hand for trying. Yeah, that's a good really awesome. Well that leads to uh, actually our quiz of the day. And the quiz of the day is this question. What do you do when you want to know the purpose of an item? Do you A, ask the item, B, you ask other items, C, you have, you have the items form a committee and then you decide, D, you ask the creator of the item, or E, you wander about aimlessly guessing using trial and error and things like that. So think about that for a side. Where'd my guys go? You're supposed to collect an answer. Where'd they go? Yeah, you're supposed to ask them get a collective answer of what they think is the right answer to this question. Which of these answers is correct? A, ask the item. B, ask other items about that item. C, items form a committee and decide what they want to do. D, you ask the creator of the item. Or E, you wander about aimlessly guessing what we want to do with it, trialing it on different things, to and fro. You have five seconds. This is not a hard question. Five, four, three, two, one. And your answer, collective answer is D. D. And your collective answer is D. E? Oh, D. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tracy, D is the correct answer. You would ask the creator of the item. So for this, you can sit down there. So for this item, the, yeah, give him a hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So for this item, yes, Diane. Yes, go ahead. No, but that's a good guess. No, you would ask, I guess you're employing option E. You're wandering about aimlessly just guessing. And so that would be a good example. Yeah, you did take E. E is not the correct answer. D is the correct answer. You would ask the creator of the item. And so you would ask me, exactly what is that? That's all you have to do. It's a back scratcher. It's for me. It was a back scratcher. It says when I don't have a jacket on. That's, that's why I made it. It's a back scratcher. It is. I made it. I know what it is. You can shake your head no all you want. You can say I'm wrong, but I made it. I am the creator. That's what it's for. I even got a little handle there where I can hold put the aluminum on it so it would last. Okay? Even though, uh, now to Gina, yesterday she saw it in the kitchen or the office and thought it was junk and was going to throw it away. And then she said, no, that looks like something Pastor Doug would use as an illustration. And she was right. Okay, I'm going to let you hold that. Don't scratch the back of it. Okay, so, but in our life here, a lot of times, right, we go through our life and we use every option except D. We'll, uh, we'll ask ourselves, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Or we'll turn around and we'll ask others, who they don't know either what they're doing, but we'll turn around and ask them. And we'll say, hey, what do you think I ought to be doing? And what's going on? And what's, what's about? And what, what's my purpose here? And why am I alive? And all those things. And sometimes we... Just because we like committees or groups, we'll form a group and we'll have food, right? And we'll have uh, food, so we always have, if you have a group, you have food, right? And more than two people, you have to have food. And so we'll eat and we'll be talking and we'll say, you know, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know either. I don't know, do you know? No, I don't know. I don't, do you know why you're here? No, no. But that's okay, we'll just, we'll just have a good time not knowing. We'll have any food. And then sometimes we'll even do option E, uh, <laughs> where we just wander around. I think I'll try this. I think I'm going to try that. Well, that didn't work. Ooh, I look really stupid there. Oh, that, that didn't work. Okay, I'll try that. No, that ain't it. Oh, I'm going to cause, oh, I'm causing trouble there. I won't do that. When really, all we have to do is ask the Creator. See, we fall into this thing where sometimes, even though the world says it, we say it's not right, but we think we were just kind of popped up sometimes. There was no plan about why we're here have no purpose. It's just we're here. But if we actually ask the creator, he actually tells us. 
fact, he gave us, we'll talk about it probably next Sunday, this owner manual. It's got an owner manual, and it's a nice little book, and you open it up, and in the first part of it, it actually says, oh, that was the answer. It says, God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. And their purpose is to let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And then the next part says, which is, I really like this. People don't, may not grasp the significance of this. But in that verse we just read, what had God done? What did God do? He just said it. He had, didn't make man. Now, if that had been me, sometimes in my life, I say a lot of things. I'd like to, I'd like to do something, but then I don't do it. But the thing about God is when God says, let us do something, God's going to do something. <coughs> and so he's going to do exactly what he said. In the previous verse, we go back, he says, let us make man in our image. Let him have dominion over the fish of the the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing. And then the next thing he does is he actually creates man, what? In his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female, he created them. He blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. I want you to fill the earth and to subdue it. What was the last part of that verse? I want you to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Whatever God says... He then goes and does. And the neat part, we, this is just an aside. So not only does he do what he said, say what he's going to do, and then do what he says, he turns around and gives it the ability to do what he wants it to do. And so then he blessed them. Next slide. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Every other day of the week, it was, it was good. But once he made man, it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And so out of that, what can we learn? Goes to the, the question of what is our purpose. Well, uh, team A, one more time. I need you. Where'd you go? This is team A up here. Team B. Well, what we learned is I am not from some primordial, let's say you say that word, primordial ooze. There wasn't just some stuff floating around out there and, well, you know, maybe two things got together and created something and whatever something, and it kind of happened. I am not from primordial ooze. God created me. I was not an accident. God didn't turn around his back and then all of a sudden, like, two... Uh, molecules collide while he wasn't looking and he goes oh I guess that's man that's not how that happened and so I want you to participate this so that you know so that I can show that we've learned something today this is team A you're going to say I'll give you the hard one I am not from some primordial ooze so he'll lead you in that as you practice that I am not from primordial <laughs> you can say it better than that let's go Very good. One more time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, and you guys are, I was not an accident. Okay, that's yours. I was not an accident. Okay, your turn. You have to, every time I point to you, you're supposed to do it. Okay, good. So if nothing else, you've learned that. <laughs> okay, if nothing else, today you've learned that. <laughs> that's right. Next, wait, wait. Next slide. Oh, that's me. I got the new clicker. A. With conviction. There was a reason I was created. I have a 
Exactly. So we know we're not from primordial ooze, right? We know we have a purpose. There was a reason I was created. I have a purpose. And team A. All right, give yourself, I'm stopping. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Now, you say, well, the first two I can understand is about purpose. You know, I'm not primordial news. I have a purpose, I have a cause. But did we just take a left and talk about children and fruit of the loom? Womb? Sorry, fruit of the loom. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's underwear. Fruit of the womb. Anthony, cut that out when you do the edit. <laughs> fruit of, that's, that's actually not the worst thing I've ever said from a pulpit, but we won't go into that. So the fruit of the womb is a reward. <clears throat> and you see, the, the thing is, a lot of times, uh, because we are his creation and we wander around and things happen, we, we sometimes forget where we've come from. In fact, all of us, since none of us are Adam or Eve, are children, somebody's. And all of us are a heritage. And so what is a heritage? We look it up and it means it's something that was given to someone else. For us to happen, God gave life. We are heritage. We are the the fruit of the womb is a reward. It's a positive thing. <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, we sit there and say, well, you don't know where I'm from. You don't know how I got here. You don't know all the things that have transpired in my life. I was, uh, I, I was the consequence of, of some bad actions, some sin. But the reality is, it doesn't matter whether... Uh, this is how it happens. Whether the event that, that was transpiring was in wedlock, out wedlock, in a tree, in a barn, on a house, whatever. What we fail to see is that at that moment, the God of all creation was looking and saying, I have a need. And I am going to create something with purpose. You see, maybe what the adversary meant for evil, I'm going to take it and make good. And so in, the, in that process, you may not know this, but there's like 100 million sperm that go and, uh, in the process of uh, creating a human being. And to me, this is a visualization. God sees all this mass going, all these little swimmers, and he's going... What I have a need, I know the future, even from the beginning. And so I'm going to need, I think I'm going to need a female in this one. Not think, I know. And so this half, you guys, sorry, you guys ain't going to make it. And uh, she needs to be, I want five foot two, so that's this, this amount. And she's going to have brown hair, even though some days she, when she gets older she'll dye it blonde. But she's going to have brown hair. And she's going to have a smile that lights up a room. And because I want her to catch the heart of some hillbilly from eastern Kentucky. And, and I'm going to, she's, going to like, uh, she's going to like music. And she's going to like people. And I'm going to, I'm going to have, when she's born, she's going to have crooked legs. And so, but that's okay. I've already planted ahead of time a doctor that's going to, while she's a child, going to straighten them out. She's going to have a lazy eye, but I've already got a doctor lined out years ahead that's going to correct that. But I'm going to do that because I want her to know what it feels like and have compassion for people who are on the outside who are not always perfect. I'm going to lay it out that way because I have a need because there are going to be people 
20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, who I want to know me. And they're going to feel disenfranchised and they're going to feel like they're on the outside. And I'm going to need somebody who has a, my heart who can reach out and touch them. And I'm going to, I'm going to just like Adam, I did with Adam and Eve, I'm going to parade her in front of him. And Adam's going to choose her. And Adam's going to go, whoa, man. This is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone, right? And then he's... Then they're going to go, and they're going to go to a land she doesn't even know about. But I'm going to send her to a land. And they're going to go on a mission trip. And I'm going to, while uh, he's managing the camp, he's going to turn to her and give her an interpreter and give her a box of my word, of books that contain my word. And she's going to walk the paths between the hills and the mountains and the village of the rainforest until... She finds a house. And she's going to go in and she's going to share my word. And families are going to come and know me. Yeah. And then on the way back, she's going to look down in this valley, in this creek, and there's this little orphan boy who's all alone. And I'm going to send her down there and she's just going to give him a hug. Because 20 years in his life, after that, I'm going to be dealing with him. And he's going to be questioning God, do you love me? And I'm going to remind him, of course I love you. I sent somebody from half the world around over just to give you a hug. Because I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I know the end from the beginning. I am God, and my purpose and my pleasure will be fulfilled. That's what he does. The world can tell you whatever they want. They can say whatever they want. It can feed you a bunch of lines. But the reality is, we say it. I saw you in your mother's womb. I knew you in your father's loins. I know my thoughts toward you, thoughts of good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. You have a purpose. You didn't just happen, but you were created. And so that God who filters all that out Finds the one that makes it to completion, and then man becomes a living soul. That's how it happens. And there's a, a, a song, it goes, uh, I hope you, I don't know if you can read that, but it's, a, it's an old song. It's not, uh, in fact, I was talking to somebody the other day about it, and they didn't know it, but it goes, <clears throat> That we're going to change in just a second. It goes, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives. Within my heart. And I, as I was going through this, it came to me, we're going to change those words a little bit. Because I think this also applies. <clears throat> it's, I live, I live, and then you put your name in, so it would be, I live, I live, Doug Spainhauer lives today. Because God walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. I live, I live, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know I live because he lives within my heart. Sing it with me one more time. Put your name in. 
I live, I live. Doug Spainhauer lives today cause he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. I live, I live salvation to impart. You ask me how I know I live because he lives within my heart. Give God some thanks because we are alive. And so once I know my purpose, the question that comes is, what is my part? He says it's the part, the role of man and male and female to dominate the earth. What part do I play? And to me, it wraps up in the, the example of Moses. And so Moses said, Moses is uh, getting ready. He hasn't, he's getting ready to go back to Egypt. The Lord has seen him. He's at the burning bush. And so the Lord said to him, ask him a very simple question. What is in your hand? And Moses said, well, it's a rod. And the Lord says, take what's in your hand and just throw it on the ground. And so he cast it on the ground. And, and to me, this is the funny part, but it becomes a serpent. And we don't talk about this part in the, usually when they, from the pulpit, but what's the same Moses did? Ran. He was afraid of snakes. Moses was afraid of snakes. And so he hits this big old snake and he runs from it. And then the Lord tells him to do what? Reach your hand out and grab it. Reach out and grab it. Take it by the tail. And then it says, then he reached out. That, he, that they, the people where he's going to go to, Israel, may believe that the Lord God of their fathers and the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Okay. You want to know what your purpose is? Look in your hand. Yeah. What has God given you? What situation has he placed you in? And the problem is, we're kind of like uh, Moses there. When we start to apply that, because the reason we're holding our hand, we don't want to apply it, but we throw it down, it turns into something. And we're afraid. And we run. But God says, you know what you need to do? Grab it by the tail and pick it up. And when you do, all of those people that I'm sending you to will know that you have been in the presence of the God Almighty. We wonder, why is it that they don't know? They, we pray, Lord, let them see your presence in me. Okay, here's how. Here's how. What's in your hand? What's he called you to do? Just take it, throw it down. Moses didn't change that rod. Whatever you do, to me, it's the example is the, it's like seed. Throw it out there. There's not a gardener or anybody that's ever had a garden that has changed the seed to a plant. As a gardener, all you can do is take what's in your hand and throw it in the ground. You don't make it... Uh, form a little plant and then grow up and form fruit you say well I water I whatever yeah but you don't give the increase right so why are you afraid why are you worried take whatever is in your hand cast it out and let God bring it to fruition That's all you have to do. And when you do, right, it's going to grow if, if you, like a seed. You don't have a seminar. That seed, I've never known a seed go like an acorn. Go to an acorn seminar to learn how to become an oak tree. 
Have you? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of an apple seed rolling around on the ground saying, hey, can I sign up for an apple seed class to learn how to grow into an apple tree? Hey, can we have a seminar on that? We need a seminar on how to, how to go from an acorn to an oak tree. Why? Why, why? why do they not go to class to do that? Because the God who created, right, the acorn, put everything in it that it needs to grow into an oak tree. It's in you. Don't let the world confuse you. Sorry, you're not from primordial ooze. You have a plan and a purpose. He saw you. He split that stuff up so that you know how that 100 million or 150 million that was swimming there, right, for that egg? You know how many won? One. And you know which one won? You did. Don't let the world tell you you're a loser. I was a winner from day one. Even before I was born, I was a winner. Right? I beat 150 million others. Somebody ought to be saying, hallelujah, I'm a winner. Right? I did. I beat 150 others. He selected me out of all that mass, right? He selected me. That's what he's done because he knows the end from the beginning. He looks out and he says, there's a need. And I am going to select someone, and I have a purpose for them. Each of us have that purpose. If you guys can come up. And so my question to you today really revolves around what's, what's in your hand. You say, my, well, I've had this happen and that happen and whatever happened and blah, 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 blah. Whatever you want to say. Yes. In this world, this is scriptural, you may not believe this. In this world, you will have troubles. In this world, you will have troubles. In our example, the, the little girl, she had uh, uh, twisted legs and she had a lazy eye. In this world, you will have troubles. But be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. Why are we depressed? Doesn't. In, next slide, sorry. I get used to this. So the question is, what is your hand? And there's the scripture as, as they get ready to play. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. What? All of creation is earnestly expecting, waiting on you to achieve what God has for you, to reach your potential in Him, to fulfill your purpose. This whole world is waiting for that, for you to fulfill your mission. The whole world is waiting for you. What is your mission? We talk about it in small group. When I fulfill my mission, when I fulfill the purpose I have, what am I doing? I'm living my best life. This world, the trees, all those things that we have dominion over, right? They're waiting it's waiting, it's groaning in anticipation for you to achieve your best life. This day forward. You can do it. Doesn't matter your circumstance, doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, blah, 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 blah. Even when the adversary comes to you and he says, Oh, Pastor Doug said that, but remember when you did, and you did, you know what you ought to say to him? I thought about this the other day. 
you ought to say to him, well, devil, you're exactly right. I had forgot about that. Wait a minute. Hold right there. Uh, oh, I said, I said something to somebody. It wasn't nice. Okay, wait a minute. Hold that. God, the devil just reminded me that I said something that wasn't nice to Pastor Doug. And I'm going to ask for your forgiveness. And then what does Jesus do? Well, the Father. Oh, that's okay. It's covered by the blood. Let me cast it from the, from the, as far as the east is from the west into the sea of forgetfulness. And then I go back. Now I can't say that. He goes, well, you did. Oh, that's a good one too. Hold on just a minute. Father, uh, I didn't give Jackie the parking space that she needed. Please forgive me. Uh, wait a minute. Jackie, I didn't give you that parking space. Forgive me. Hey, God. Okay, now. I've asked you to forgive me. Can you forgive me? Oh, let me take that. Oh, where's it go? See of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west. Go back over to Satan. What's another one, Satan? Because every time I go, he takes me that. I can come back saying, hallelujah. God is awesome. He's true to his word. I'm clean. What's another one, Satan? Well, I ain't got no more. Well, well, go find some. I enjoy this. That's how we ought to take that. But we don't. Because we don't know our purpose. Instead, we sit there and he'll go, Say that and we go, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess it, there's just nothing. I'm not worthy. I'm from primordial ooze. I don't even know what that means, but that's what I'm from. I guess I'll just wander around and guess what my, my good life is about. No. Go to the Creator. Go to the Creator. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. And what will he do? He will what? He will liberally give it. Not my words. I can't tell you what it's about, what I'm for, whatever. I have to go to the Creator. If we'll all stand as they lead us into worship, if you have a need today or if, you, if, if the adversary is on your back and he's saying, you got it, you got it, you got it, well, tell you what, bring him up here and do exactly what I just did. Say, come with me, Satan. Come on. You're exactly right. You know what? I did do those. Here, come with me because I might forget them. Right? I'm getting old. I might forget those things. Come up here with me. Come on. Come on, and keep telling me one at a time, though. I'm not very smart. Just give me one at a time, and then let me go. And if there's somebody here that I did that to, oh, because what Scripture say, leave your gift and then go, I'm going to go take care of that because I know my God, the creator of all things, is able. That's who he is. Oh. There is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me, holy, 
my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show